Welcome to Project Management Research Institute. In this video, let us take a closer look at a closer look at the strategic business case and the execution strategy of Qatar FIFA World Cup 2022. Qatar is spending around US dollar 220 billions for this World Cup football tournament. In the year 2006, the total expenditure for conducting uh, the World Cup tournament was only 6.2 billion dollars. It grew to, it reduced to 3.5 in the year 2010, that is in South Africa. Then the next World Cup in 2014, it was maybe almost three times, that is uh, US dollar 11.2 billion. And in 2018 Russia World Cup, they spent around US dollar 20 billion. And when it comes to Qatar 2022, we are talking about US dollar 220 billion. That is more than 10 times the cost of uh, the, the Russia World Cup that was conducted in 2018. So, so this made me slightly curious why Qatar is spending this kind of money for conducting this World Cup. This is huge money. So that was the trigger for uh, analyzing uh, the business case uh, of this World Cup further and the execution strategies behind it. See, this is the figure, 220 billion, uh, it looks like this in digits. The state of Qatar has spent $220 billion on building world-class infrastructure, which comprises of new roads, public transport, hotels and sporting facilities, and eight high-tech stadiums. These are the uh, stadiums. We have Al Bayt Stadium, which has a capacity of 68,895 people. Lucille Stadium, which has a capacity of 88,966. I think Lucille is the, uh, the, the largest capacity stadium among all of these things. And Ahmad bin Ali Stadium, that is 45,000 seating capacity. Then we have Al Janoub Stadium with a seating capacity of 44,000 and Al Tumama Stadium with a seating capacity of 44,400. And Education City has a capacity of 44,667. And Khalifa International Stadium 45,857. And Stadium 974 has a capacity of 44,089. Considering the size of Qatar, so this kind of infrastructure uh, building, uh, that, is, uh, th that is a highly risky business because it is not a very big country. And all the stadiums adjacent to each other, now what is the uh, reusability factor? How can we justify this kind of an investment in this kind of an infrastructure in a small country? After the World Cup, what can happen to this? Will this lie idle there? That is a question. Now, why this much? Now, the answer, here is the answer. See, mega sports events trigger development opportunities to achieve long-term goals in areas like economic tourism, social culture, environmental sport and health. So whenever a mega event happens in a place, uh, there, is a, there is a positive impact on the economic activity. So when the stadiums are built, uh, a lot of people got employment, a lot of cash flow happened. Uh, so I think uh, these things started in the year 2008. And starting from 2008 till 2023, 2022 to end, the whole place is, uh, was vibrant despite uh, the pandemic and maybe a recession, all those things. So this is the uh, trend. Uh, mega sports events trigger development opportunities to achieve long-term goals in areas like economic tourism, 
social culture, environmental, sport and health. Now if you really look at uh, Qatar, see they had a vision statement called QNV2030 vision, that is Qatar National Vision 2030. This was drafted in the year 2008. So one logic uh, which can justify this 200 billion uh, investment is uh, Qatar would have anyway spent uh, this much money to support their uh, Qatar national vision for 2030 which was uh, sorry which was focusing on which was focusing on uh, human development social development environment development and economic development so if you look if you really look at the middle east countries they are all relying we all know that they are all relying on uh, the petrol or or, or the or the or, yeah, or the or petrol or diesel whatever their revenue is based on oil now there are two things that is happening to oil one is the reserves of oil is depleting and there is global uncertainty about uh, this oil trade and the third one is uh, that is a major thing uh, the electric vehicles and alternate sources of fuel are rapidly getting adopted so in my country itself see now electric vehicles are very visible on the roads uh, almost every other manufacturer automobile manufacturer have an electric vehicle model and soon uh, this hydrogen uh, vehicles are also going to come in so alternate the, so the reliance on oil will reduce that is one then this environmental impact because most of these countries okay the the temperature levels are also increasing so they have a lot of money with them so they are looking for other opportunities or other avenues for improvement it was all started by uh, Dubai uh, because Dubai had this national vision for 2015 uh, to convert Dubai into the best tourist destination of the world. They started by you know, Emirates Airlines, then new airport, new seaports, uh, the, you know, the uh, Dubai Palm, the Dubai World, uh, the Burj Khalifa. So all these things put together they could successfully make the transition uh, from an oil dependent economy to a tourism uh, dependent economy. Uh, now the next to follow suit is Qatar with this World Cup. They had this QNV vision 2030 and this World Cup uh, became is becoming a catalyst to speed up the whole thing. So one logic is Qatar would have anyway spent this kind of money for supporting their uh, national vision for 2030 and through this world cup they have the speed they have speeded it up that's all so they are not putting this 200 billion dollars onto the world cup they are investing that 200 billion dollars onto their national vision for 2030 world cup is only a catalyst for this entire activity Now, this, if you really look at uh, this World Cup 2022 has this sustainability, sustainability strategy, that is a strategy that is driving it. What is the sustainability strategy? Maximize the tournament's contribution to people's well-being, economic development and environmental protection in the short and long term. I'll repeat this again maximize the tournament's contribution to people's well-being, economic development and environmental protection in the short and long term. So if you read, if you put uh, the sustainability strategy of the World Cup and the Qatar National Vision for 2030 side by side, we see the synergy. <coughs> QNV is based on human development, social development, environmental development and economic development. 
where a sustainability strategy is again based on people's well-being, economic development, environmental protection in the short and long term. So there's a lot of synergy between these two uh, strategies. So the point, the key point to be taken is Qatar would have, Qatar is spending their money to support their national vision 2030. World Cup is just a catalyst. They are not pumping in the two, uh, two, 230 billion US dollars just for the World Cup. It gets into, uh, gets in as an investment uh, to support their national vision 2030. Now let us take a look at the execution strategy we have three bodies here. One is the FIFA, which is the supreme uh, body of uh, football across the globe. And there is another body that is created specifically for Qatar 2022, that is FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 LLC. It is also known as Q22. This include uh, specialists from across the globe who have had who has past experience by associating with this kind of uh, events like uh, world cup cricket world cup football olympics and uh, so people have worked in similar mega events uh, that constitute this fifa world cup qatar 2022 llc uh, so they are they are responsible for uh, the real execution of the event not the infrastructure FIFA is the supreme authority. They give the standards and uh, standards and stuff like that. And then we have supreme committee that for delivery and uh, legacy that is also known as SC. So they take care of the infrastructure uh, development for stadiums and uh, the the tourist villages and stuff like that. So this is the uh, structure behind a uh, high level structure behind the execution uh, successful uh, planning and execution of uh, the World Cup football FIFA World Cup football 2022 now let's take a closer look at the roles and responsibilities of each of these entities now role of FIFA they are the owner ultimate decision-making authority sets the technical requirements and coordinates the delivery and completion and manages the key tournament stakeholders so that is the role of fifa they are the ultimate decision making authority that sets the technical requirements uh, they are the owner organization then the role of fifa world cup uh, qatar that is the this body uh, they are responsible for planning and delivery of operations and services for the tournament uh, like the telecom, the lighting, uh, the communication and all those things. Then uh, they are accountable for directly supporting the day-to-day -day delivery of the matches and uh, comprise of members from the local organizing committees of previous FIFA World Cups. So if you go to LinkedIn and search for people who were who who are managers uh, in the present World Cup and if you look at their profiles uh, it is very clear they have all worked in uh, events similar to this uh, in the past. Then the Supreme Committee for Delivery and uh, Legacy that is the SC that is a lead government entity responsible for coordination and delivery of the host country's infrastructure services and legacy programs. So they are behind uh, uh, planning, monitoring and controlling and closing of the infrastructure projects. The impact on business when a mega event like this happens, uh, what is the impact on business? The country's economy will boost, this according to European Business Review. And even like a World Cup football will definitely boost the country's economy. People will make more money through online betting, boost to airline business, demand for local transport, growth in hotel business, benefits the street food vendors, increase in online food delivery business, increased shopping, increased advertising, construction of sports villages, 
an increase in sales of football accessories. So these are the ways and means of uh, boosting uh, business. Now, delivering successful World Cup will demonstrate that Qatar's sports industry is a class unto itself and Qatar has one of a kind of opportunity to put itself on the international sporting map, map on the international business and economic map. By Sheikha al Hod al Thani, Deputy CEO and Chief Business Officer of Qatar Financial Center. So now Qatar has the infrastructure, Qatar has the uh, expertise at the end of this World Cup, they have this track record and infrastructure is in place. People got exposure to an event like this. Now this can be the venue for uh, multiple upcoming events in the future. Maybe Qatar can even become the hub for football in the, in the region so, or it can even become the hub for uh, like European Cup, there can be an Arab Cup and you know, all those things can happen around this. That is going to happen for sure. Now, in this mega, mega master plan development since 2008, what we are looking at is really the benefits of it over the next 20 years. This is by Nasser al Qatar, the CEO of the FIFA World Cup. Qatar 2022. Now they're envisaging a payback period of 20 years for this investment of uh, 20 billion, uh, so 220 billion US dollars. So they are not, they don't want the money immediately. Uh, they are willing to wait. It's a cash rich company, maybe, maybe the second uh, richest country in the world. Uh, if my understanding is right, so they have surplus money, they can wait. Now, uh, this is by the FIFA president, Gianni Infantino. I've never seen a host being so ready so much in advance. All stadiums are finished. Infrastructure in terms of hotels and roads is being completed. So Qatar is ready, FIFA is ready, and the world is ready. Yes, this was a high precision demonstration of program and project planning, monitoring and controlling. So mega projects concurrently happening. Everything got over ahead of schedule and, and we can feel it when the tool, everything is, is in place. Uh, there, there, there is absolutely no problem. So this is a, a high degree uh, demonstration of professional project management. Uh, the forecast uh, by SNP Global Market Intelligence is Qatar World Cup will generate 6.5 billion dollar and what I heard is it has already surpassed uh, seven the main, because most of this revenue is coming through from sponsorship, broadcasting right and betting. Uh, so this money goes to FIFA. This doesn't go to uh, the host country. Uh, this money goes to FIFA and they will use it for uh, supporting emerging nations to improve their football uh, and infrastructure. These are the sponsors. So Adidas, Coca-Cola, Wanda, Hyundai, Qatar Airways, Qatar Energy, Visa, Budweiser, Baijus, Crypto, Globant, uh, Hisense and McDonald's, Vivo. Uh, these are the uh, sponsors for FIFA as well as this particular, some of them are sponsors for this particular World Cup and others are uh, sponsors for FIFA itself. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, so I got, we got curious uh, when we read the investment of 220 billion which is 20 times uh, uh, more than, 10 times more than, uh, more than 10 times uh, than the previous World Cup that was organized in Russia. 
So that prompted us to research on this further and, uh, and the key takeaway is uh, this, food, this investment is not for Qatar uh, World Cup 2022. This is for, actually this is for supporting the Qatar's National Vision 2030. Uh, World Cup has you know, speeded up the whole process uh, and as per the CEO of this World Cup, what he's saying is we are willing to wait for 20 years to really reap the benefits of this investment. Hope uh, we could add a good value to you. And if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, please do subscribe. We'll be coming out with more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much for watching.